Exodus chapter 15. I give honor to your pastor and his family, the pastor's wife. I hope you know how blessed you are. I hope you know how blessed you are. Man, we travel um, full time right now. That's uh, the calling God's placed us in for this season of our life. And we get to experience a lot of churches and a lot of situations. And, and I'm thankful that the body of Christ is an incredible thing. But we get to see all kinds of leadership. And I just want you to know you're blessed. And I hope you really, sometimes we are so close to things that, you know, my wife grew up in Savannah. I lived there. I was there over 15 years. I was never that impressed with Savannah because I was there every day. Now we've left. We've been gone. Now I go back and we visit as a, um, as a tourist. Man, Savannah's pretty nice. Now that, I, now that I can go as a tourist and not living there. And sometimes when we're so up close, we, 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 we can miss the value of what we have. And I hope you have not done that as a church because you are truly blessed with great leadership. Amen. I'm expecting a miraculous move of God today. And I'm not just saying that flippantly. I'm not just saying that because that's what you say when you start your message. I'm saying that I have the utmost confidence that God is going to sweep through this place at the end of the service and there are going to be people that are going to be healed in this place today. Uh, we were on the, we were on 20 coming into town. My wife was on the phone yesterday and she had her earbuds in and she was talking um, and I, I had kind of leaned back in the seat and, and I was just kind of laying there and meditating on God and saying, God, I, what do you want me to minister? And it, if you don't incorporate those times in your prayer, I know you're standing, I'll get right into the verse, but if you don't incorporate those times in your prayer, you need to. Prayer is more than just us talking to God. We need to give God time to talk to us. And I was just doing that, had my eyes closed, just kind of meditating, and, and God spoke to me, and he said, I want you to study me as Jehovah Rapha. And so just that moment, that moment right then, right there in the car on 20, I knew God was going to be healing somebody in this place because he wouldn't ask me to study that if that's not wasn't his plan. And so I have no doubt today you walked into this place with a need in your life. God is going to move in the service. Exodus chapter 15, verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it is called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree, and when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance. And there he proved them and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do with that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where, where were twelve wells of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. The Lord said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Thee. I just simply want to minister from what I've already told you. I just want to minister from Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. Pastor, could you pray? Savior, we love you today. We are grateful, Lord, for the presence of God to be here. We thank you, Lord, for the man of God that you have sent to us. I pray, Lord God, that every ear would hear, every mind would understand, but most of all, every heart and spirit would receive the word of God. Let it bring forth fruit in due season. Your word would not return to Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. This morning in our Sunday school lesson, for those of you that did not, were not here, I talked about the struggle is real, and we all deal with faith and doubt. They all are coexist within our lives, and I challenge you for the next 30 minutes, if you can push doubt aside and allow faith to have its way, God's going to do something incredible in this place. I do want to say, um, if I pause for a moment and I just kind of stand in here, I'm not glitching. 
Um, I've, I, the last seven services that I've preached, I've been preaching with an interpreter. And so I might just kind of by, <laughs> out of habit, just pause and let the interpreter go, but we don't have an interpreter. So um, if, I, if I do that, just bear with me. I'll, I'll realize where I'm at and we'll keep on going. We find our scripture text, Exodus chapter 15. And uh, as I was studying and God brought me to this verse, I thought, God, this is not really the verse I thought I was going to be starting in. It's not really the verse the story that I thought I would be leading my message with. We find the children of Israel freshly out of Egypt. They've come through the Red Sea, and, and God has delivered them. Miriam has had her tambourine. They've, they've had their time of shouting. They've had their time of worshiping, of thanking God for all the miracles. Moses has sung a song about the victories of God, and they had their moment, but now they're three days later. They're three days from their shout. They're three days from their victory. They're three days from that incredible moment where they walked through that Red Sea on dry ground and they got to the other side and they watched the armies of Egypt uh, devoured within the waters of that Red Sea. They, they, They saw their enemy crushed before them and they shouted in Jubilee. But now it's three days later. And it hasn't been three easy days. It's been three hard days. Three very long, dry days in the wilderness. Three days in the desert with no water. They had found no water, our scripture says. And and, and, and now they're thirsty. Now that victory seems to be a distant memory. And all they can think of right now is their throats and their mouths are parched. Uh, their tongue feels like cardboard uh, within their mouth. And, 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 and they're, they're stumbling with their words. And, the, and, and, and their children are crying. And that's all they can focus on. The dryness. The thirst. And they're looking for water, and they finally find a place with water, and it's Mara. The water is bitter. It, it, it's, like, it's like throwing that final stone at them. They're like, are you kidding me? My children are dying of thirst. Our families are dying of thirst. We haven't had water in three days. And when we finally get to a place that has water, we can't drink it. We have to just look at it. It looks incredible. It looks refreshing. It looks cool. It looks like something I I just want to plunge myself into. But if I allow my kids to drink it, they'll get sick and they'll die. If we allow the cattle to drink it, they're just going to get sick and they're going to die. And it was like the last offense that they could take. They said, that's it. Moses, what have you done to us? You promised us freedom. You told us about how how God was going to deliver us. And now you brought us out to the middle of this desert to die. We're going to die of thirst. Staring at water that we cannot drink. And they begin to murmur, the scripture says, about Moses. Moses does the only thing he knows to do. Because he couldn't fix it. But he says, I know someone that can. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't don't know what you're going through today, but uh, these hands aren't magical hands. Uh, I don't have power to fix uh, whatever it is that's going on in your life. Uh, Within me, uh, there is no power to do it, uh, but I can take you to the one that does have power. Uh, I can introduce you to the one that does have the ability. Uh, I can introduce you to the one uh, that can turn your situation around. Uh, And so I challenge you for the next few moments uh, as we talk Talk about this God uh, that is great uh, and greatly to be praised. Uh, This God that they just sung about, uh, he can do it. Uh, He can do it. Uh, He can heal. Uh, We've seen him do it before. Uh, He can restore. We've seen him do it before. Uh, And so let's just let our faith go. And Moses said, I can't do it, but God, you can. And we need your wisdom. I, I need your wisdom right now, God. And, and God says, I see that tree right there. It looks like, it looks like it's not really important. I heard a minister preach one time. 
God knew they were going to get there long before they got there because he already put a tree there that would fix their issues and their problems. Uh, so many times uh, we get to a spot in our life uh, and we think, I don't know which way to turn. I don't know which way to go. Uh, and, and, and we're saying, does God even know where I'm at? Uh, and the whole time God says, I've been here long before you ever got here. Uh, and I planted a tree uh, years ago uh, so that it would be ready and prepared uh, for you uh, when you got to this moment. Uh, God's never caught by surprise. Uh, he's never caught unaware. Uh, he knows exactly what to do uh, at every moment. Uh, I may be shocked. Uh, I may be surprised. Uh, but God already has the answer. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. That is the truth. That is the God says, take that tree, put it in the water. And immediately, the waters are turned from bitter to sweet. Immediately, the water becomes drinkable and refreshing. That water that would have caused sickness, that water that, 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 that would have um, even perhaps probably brought death uh, into their homes, their families, and their cattle. Now, God has healed the waters. And then God begins to speak. And he says, if you will hearken unto my voice, if you will do what was right in my sight, if you will give ear to my commandments, keep my statutes, I will not put any of the diseases that were in Egypt on you. And then he makes this incredible statement. I am the Lord that healeth thee. This moment right here is where God introduces himself to Israel as Jehovah Rapha. We don't see it in English, but if you go back to the Hebrew, right here is the first time Rapha is introduced. Jehovah, they knew Jehovah. They knew what Jehovah meant. They knew who Jehovah was, but he had never been introduced to them up to this point as Jehovah the healer. But in this moment, God said, I'm showing you what I did to the waters and how I turned it around. And they were, they were, they were diseased, but I healed those waters. What I just showed you is the God that I want to be in your life. I want to be Jehovah Rapha in your life. I want to be the one that heals, the one that turns around the one that restores this is the first reference of God as Jehovah Rapha our healer what an incredible moment they experienced God him, God showed himself to be a healer it made bitter waters sweet he introduced a new concept of himself to the children of Israel we had the benefit of of reading this book and we get the benefit of understanding we can we can skip ahead in the story if we need to 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 find out what we need to find out i'm not walking through day by day just learning as i go i, I get the advanced road map I, I i get i get the gps I, I get the latest technology right here and i get all the updates as soon as i need them they're right there and they're available but they didn't have that privilege they were just learning as they go and just Walking and, and another another concept of God was just a revelation uh, after a revelation. But you and I, we get the privilege of understanding God uh, is uh, the primary uh, healer. Uh, through him, uh, all life exists. Uh, we, he can give life. Uh, he can stop life. Uh, and he can heal uh, life. Uh, he is Jehovah Rapha. But if you'll bear with me just for a moment, I just want to kind of take a stroll through Scripture. Deuteronomy 32, verse 39. See now that I am he, there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. The, the children of he, the, the, the Hebrew people were about to go into Babylon. They were being exiled into Babylon. But God promises them that one day he's going to free them from their captivity. And when he brings them freedom, he is going to be 
be Jehovah Rapha to them. He is going to restore their health. He's going to restore them physically as well as mentally. He says they may persecute you while you are in that moment. That moment that you are in Babylon, it may be rough. You may be bruised. You may be beaten. But I promise you it will not always be that way. I will visit you. I will bring you free. I will bring you out. And I will be Jehovah Rapha. I will heal. And I will restore. Jeremiah 30 verse 17 the same promise for I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds saith the Lord because the because they called the, they called thee an outcast saying this is Zion huh, which no man seeketh after in other words Jeremiah is also prophesying to the children of Israel you're in bondage Everything looks bad. Everything looks broken. Everything is sore. Every, everything seems to be wounded. Uh, there's pain everywhere. Uh, but God, uh, through the prophet and, uh, and Jeremiah 33 and 6 says, uh, Behold, uh, I will bring it health uh, and cure. Uh, I will cure them uh, and reveal unto them the abundance of peace uh, and truth. Every single one of us go through those moments where the enemy comes in like a flood and we have to deal with uh, issues of life and we are bruised, uh, we are wounded, uh, we are hurt. Uh, we go through physical times where our body is attacked. Uh, we go through times where our mind is attacked. Uh, we go through times where our family is attacked. Uh, we go through times where our finances are attacked. Uh, we, go through vi we go through times where every area of our life uh, the enemy tries to attack. Uh, but God, uh, he has promised over and over and over and over again in his scripture uh, when you are wounded uh, when you are attacked uh, when you are afflicted uh, I uh, am uh, the healer uh, I know how to heal your body uh, I know how to heal your mind uh, I know how to heal your finances uh, I know how to heal your marriage uh, I know how to heal uh, whatever it is uh, you are being attacked I know how to uh, heal Hosea prophesied the same thing before the Babylonian invasion. Hosea lived in a time when the Hebrew people were threatened by the Assyrian nation. He reflected the same hope as Jeremiah. And God would allow them to be wounded by the enemy. But he would not abandon them. Instead, he would heal them. Hosea 6, beginning in verse 1. Come. And let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. Look at this phrase right here. In the third day, he will raise up, and we shall live in his sight. The children of Israel didn't know what was being told them right there. They did not understand the prophetic necessarily, what was being saying right there. Hosea was introducing God, Jehovah Rapha, as Jesus Christ, the Savior. He was saying, you may, not, you may only know him right now as Jehovah Rapha, but there's going to be a day where we're going to know him as Jesus Christ. His name's going to be Emmanuel, God with us. His name is going to be above every other name. He's going to be given a name that's higher than any other name. He is Jehovah Rapha to you right now. But there's coming a day where he's going to be Jesus Christ. Hosea makes this prophetic statement talking about God's healing and God's revival and being raised up on the third day. It would be just a little ways down the road. There would be a king by the name of King Hezekiah. He was gravely ill. Matter of fact, he was told to get his things in order. He was dying. He turns his face to the wall. He begins to pray and bring supplication to God and worship God in that moment. And God gives a word to the prophet Isaiah. 
and tells Isaiah, turn around, go give him a message. We find in 2 Kings chapter 20, and in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt live and not, thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore, and it came to pass afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again. Tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, thy, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. There it is again. On the third day day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord Hosea and Isaiah both prophesied about the soon coming Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he said y'all know him as Jehovah Rapha but I want you to know the God of the Old Testament is the same God as the God of the New Testament Jehovah Rapha is the same as Jesus Christ Christ both Hosea and Isaiah announced that healing would occur on the third day it emphasizes the importance of that Messiah returning from the ultimate wound death on the third day throughout the Bible the word of God is directly connected to the concept of healing. Psalms 107 verse 19. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them. Delivered them from their destructions. Oh that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. And for his wonderful works to the children of men. He sent his word and healed them. I began to study this. It caught my attention and I just be kind of dig a little deeper. I, I'd never really put together Isaiah and Hosea before. I never really put together the three days and Jehovah Rapha being connected directly. I mean, I understood I, he's Jehovah. He's the same God, the God of the old, the God of the new. And I've always known that. I've always preached that. I've always preached he's Jehovah Rapha. But I never really saw all the connections before. The oneness of God spread throughout the scriptures from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Prophecy after prophecy. And so I begin to dig a little deeper. And Psalms here says he sent his word and his word healed them. I begin to study rabbinical writings and some of the teachings of the rabbis. Just so I could get a kind of a grasp of the mentality of the Old Testament. I'm not a Jew. I don't speak Hebrew. I, I don't know their customs. I, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of the Jewish faith and, and what the Jews that, that lived throughout the Old Testament when God was speaking to them. I, I don't have their mindset. And so I kind of went to some of their writings and began to see what they were saying. The, 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 the Jewish rabbis teach that God breathes life. Genesis 2 verse 7, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. 2 Peter 1 verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time, but by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That literally means they were pushed forward by a breath of air, that God breathed on them. The idea that the word of God has this creative power is, is wound throughout the scripture. And, and the rabbis teach that, that his word is connected directly to his spirit and to his breath. There's a Hebrew word called ruka. It literally means that when it means the same concept that when God speaks, He breathes. 
And what the rabbis teach uh, is that when we speak, we emit breath. But when God speaks, he breathes life into every word. In Genesis, uh, creation, God spoke uh, and the world became because he breathed life uh, through his word uh, as he spoke. Uh, when we are wounded, he sends his word uh, to us. Uh, his word is his breath. Uh, his breath brings life. Uh, that's why uh, I learned a long time ago, I used to get up early in the morning as a young man uh, and I'd go pray uh, about five in the morning with an elder, my, my pastor's father-in-law, uh, Brother Greenway. Uh, and there'd be more, there'd be morning five o'clock I'd still be trying to get the sleep out of my eyes and he'd be I'd be listening to that elder praying and he would go for an hour and he would do nothing but but quote one scripture after another he taught me when I pray pray the word of God I never quite grasped it as much as I do now and I understand because when I pray the word I am praying life I am praying the breath of God when you don't know what to do and you don't know what to pray you get your Bible out and you begin to pray the word of God because you are praying life into your situation you are praying the breath of God into your situation and God can bring life where there is death he can bring healing where there is wounds and so we pray the breath of God talked to him, Brother Greenway, and I had talked to him in some of those mornings, and I'd be like, Elder, some days I hear you do nothing but pray and quote scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. I mean, none of it was your words. It was all this. He said, yes. Because there are moments when I am in a position that I don't know how to pray. And I don't know what to say. And I don't know how the answer is going to come. And how even I should direct my words to pray a right prayer. But I do know his words are always true. And his words are always right. And his words are always pure. So when I don't know how or when or where. And I have more questions than I have answers. I pick up my Bible. And I just open up. And I just begin to pray. Fret not thyself because I just opened it and that's what the word says fret not thyself because of evildoers it says neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity why they'll soon be cut down I don't know what is happening around me but I know don't fret because the word says do not fret do not be afraid and so you just open that word and you allow it to speak for you word do not fret do not be afraid of evildoers for I will cut them down that's not my word that's God's word I just opened it up and the enemies of my life got quoted from the direct word of God I don't have to be afraid because he's in control and he's fighting my battle for me let's take it a step further Jesus is, of course, known as the miraculous healer who died and rose on the third day. He is referred to as the Word. The Old Testament associated the Word of God with that soon coming King, that Messiah, the presence of God, God Himself. They anxiously, the Jews of the Old Testament anxiously waited for the Word of God to come to them. Jeremiah 17, verse 14, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. They understood that if the word gets here, the presence of God gets here. If we can bring the word, 
entered into the situation, the presence of God automatically shows up. You cannot separate his word from his presence. They are not inseparable. They cannot be separated because he is his word. And so Jesus shows up on the scene. He is God manifest in the flesh. He is the embodiment of the spirit of God. He becomes God. He becomes the word of God for the people. And John begins to recognize what's going on around him. And he begins to write in John 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything that was made. That was an incredible revelation. But then John began to realize there's, a little bit, there's another step to this. And then he quoted, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It was in that moment John brings this revelation that Jehovah Rapha is now embodied in Jesus Christ. The promised Messiah took on the role of the Word and he became flesh and he dwelt among us. The writings of the prophet Isaiah focused on the Messiah. In Isaiah 53 and 5, he referred to Jehovah Rapha by this. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That is the word. He's talking about the word. But he's also talking about Jesus Christ. Because they are one and the same. It was Jesus who brought healing. His actions redeemed us. We were forgiven and therefore we are healed by his painful sacrifice on the cross. We were healed physically. We're healed mentally. We are healed spiritually. Jesus proved that while ultimately he is our savior, he is also Jehovah Rapha, our healer. He proved it over and over and over again throughout his ministry. We see him healing blind man Bartimaeus, healing the woman with the issue of blood, healing the lepers, the man at the pool of Bethesda that's already been spoken about, the lame, the blind, the deaf. The list goes on and on and on and on. We could go all day talking about the miracles of Jesus Christ. But what he was doing was he was bringing revelation just a little bit further. I introduce you that day. I introduce myself to you that day at the waters of Mara that I am Jehovah Rapha. But now Jehovah Rapha is walking among you. Now I am in your presence and I am giving you a fresh revelation. The God of the old is the same God as the God of the new. His name is Jesus Christ. I am that which was and is and is to come. I am the almighty I am the all-powerful. I am the omnipresent, all-seeing, all-knowing God. It is I. I am Jehovah Rapha, your healer, and I am with you. When I get that revelation, then I get the revelation of if he is the word made flesh, he is Jehovah Rapha made flesh, and he said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come again unto you. Oh, that day in that, Pente that upper room on the day of Pentecost, when those cloven, cloven tongues of fire appeared and the wind blew through that breath of God, breathed through that room. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as a fire, and they all began to speak with other tongues. As God gave the utterance, he filled them with his breath. He filled them with his word. He filled them with his spirit. He became Jehovah 
Rapha, not only for them, but Jehovah Rapha in them. Come on, somebody. Jehovah Rapha is not just in the room today. Jehovah Rapha is in me. He is in you. That's why I can walk to a pulpit full of faith and say somebody is about to be healed because it's not me, but Jehovah Rapha is in me. Jehovah Rapha, if you've repented of your sins and you've been baptized in Jesus' name, if you've been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, with the heaven of speaking in other tongues, Jehovah Rapha is in you. I've heard people say, well, that was then. This is now. Healings are of the past. You've come too late to tell me that. I've seen them heal too many times. I've seen blinded eyes open. I've seen deaf ears begin to hear. I've seen those that were dead, mentally brain dead. Unplug them, they are gone. And I've seen them unplugged. And bloop, bloop, breath begin to breathe. My cousin was there. They unplugged them. They said it's over. They told they told my my aunt, we've kept him on the machine as long as we can. He is drowning in his own fluids. His body cannot release. It's, we cannot do anything else. He is gone. My dad walked into that room, said a simple prayer. My aunt called me the next morning. I was in, I was in New York preaching. He called, she called me the next morning. She said, look at this. There was my cousin sitting up in bed eating cereal. God. Because my dad said, I'm just going to speak the word. And the word brings life. I've seen him heal cancer. My dad, I don't know if any of you know his story, but he was diagnosed about a little over six years ago. Diagnosed stage four bladder cancer, stage four prostate cancer, two different types, both very aggressive. It was in his bones. It was, in his, it was all throughout his body, all of his lymph nodes. It was everywhere. I sat, in the, I sat in the hospital when the doctor, I asked the doctor, how, what's the road to recovery? And he said, son, there is no road. Your dad will not recover. This was November, October, November. They had gone and do some exploratory surgery. He'd come out. When he come out, he said, it's hopeless. There is nothing we can do. He said, take your dad home, and you all enjoy Christmas. It's your last one. That was six years ago. I spoke to my dad on the phone this morning before I preach. I do every Sunday before I preach. He was in the pulpit preaching the word of God today. He's supposed to be dead, but what the doctors think they know, God knows so much more. I've seen too many. I've seen, I've seen, I, I, could, I could go on and on telling testimonies today. But some say, I just still don't know. Well, let me tell you one that just happened. I mean, this is, you were literally five days, six days this week, just the end of last week. So within the last seven days, I was preaching a revival. I preached the word of God. I, I, I felt like God told me, just saturate the ground with my word. That's just what, that's what he told me. So I did. I went in and I preached. I was preaching with an interpreter. I felt sorry for him. Because I'd be in the New Testament, Old Testament, New Testament. He was flipping this Bible trying to keep up with me like he was doing a sword drill. He was back and forth, back and forth trying to read. And I was just back and forth. That's all I did. I just word, word, word. I just, for three days straight, I just saturated the presence with word. And then that fourth night, the Spirit of God began to move and we began to pray. And I felt the gift of healing move, begin to operate. And I, and I felt the gift of faith begin to operate. And I, I didn't lay hands on no one. I just stood right here in this pulpit, and I just, or that pulpit, and I preached, and I prayed, and I called an altar service, and I prayed, and I said, I speak faith, I speak healing, I release the, the working of miracles. That was on Saturday. Monday night, we ended the service. Monday night was our last service. At the end of service, a young lady said, I, I want to testify. And she got up and she began to testify. She said, for almost a year now, I've been in constant pain. She said, 
she began to name the bones. I can't remember all the names of the bones, but she said, I had this pain shooting through my arm, and it, and it would not stop. And we went to the doctors. They couldn't figure out what was wrong. And finally, they figured it out. I had, and she named two of the bones in her arm. And she said, those bones are growing together. They're fusing together. And between them is a nerve. And that nerve runs all the way. It's connected. It goes all the way up my arm, my shoulder, up my neck, and then up into my, up into my head. And she said, for eight months, I have been in constant pain. I have not been able, she said, I have not been able to do school for eight months. I can't write. I can't play the piano. I can't do anything because I am in so much pain. The doctors haven't figured out what to do. They don't know how to fix it. She said, but Saturday night as he prayed, I was standing right there in the front. And she said, I felt something happen in my body. And she, this is Monday. She said, this has been two days since the beginning of last year, this is the first two days of my, of my life since that moment that I have been pain-free. God healed my body. I just come to tell you today, the healer is still very much alive. He is in this place. I don't know what you got going on in your life, but God told me to preach on healing today. He would not have me preach on it if he was not going to act upon his word. So whatever need you walked in those doors with, your answer is in this place today. My wife will begin to come and play. If we all stand. God is still Jehovah Rapha. He is here in this place. You say, well, I don't have a physical need in my body. When he introduced himself as the healer, he did not heal a body. He made bitter water sweet. What he was saying is, I don't just heal the physical. I heal the mental. I heal the spiritual. I turn situations around impossible situations into possible situations. I, I turn circumstances from they can't happen to they did happen. I, that is how I do. I, I am more than just a healer of the body. I, and so you may be in this place I, and you may have physical ailments in your body. God will heal you. I, you may have turmoil in your mind. God will heal you. I, you may have something going on in your home and your marriage and your family. I, God will heal it. I, something's going on in your finances. I, God will heal it. Uh, Jehovah Rapha is in uh, this uh, place uh, today. So this is what we're going to do. This is When I feel, I don't do this every time, but when I feel it, it's what I do. So if you have a need in your life, you need healing, whatever it may be, physical, financial, whatever it is, you need healing. If you just begin to make your way up front. 